Hey, Shalom, y'all. Hey, guys, it's Fletch. Welcome back to OTH. What you are looking at right now is the, um, this is kind of the underhood compartment, so to speak, on the front of a uh, uh, 2000 Polaris 500 HO high output. And that right there is my winch control solenoid, just so you know what it is. But uh, the purpose of this video was to talk about proper electrical troubleshooting tools that you should probably have on your homestead so that you can fix things yourself rather than, uh, you know, having to take it to a dealer and get charged for things that may or may not actually be wrong. Many times, uh, if it's something simple, uh, yeah, they'll fix that simple thing, but they'll also fix a part uh, that's going to cost you a lot of money along with that and tell you that it was the part and not something simple. So, having said that, the issue was, was that my cooling fan wasn't coming on. Here, this right here is the electrical relay that heads down to the cooling fan. And right below it down there is the relay that provides the power to the temperature sensor which is on the bottom of the radiator on on this quad the first thing that you know you should always do is if the the quad is on then there's got to be power and here is the, this happens to be my power cord here my hot cord coming down and it goes into the let me see if i can bring this connection up without messing up the mic right down there is the connection and um, the red one is hot all the time and what happens is it goes down and it powers the the heat sensor that's down in the bottom of the radi radiator once it gets too hot it closes the circuit so it energizes this line coming back up this line coming back up as you can see it wraps around and it comes into right there and this is the line that runs down to my fan and i couldn't figure out why the fan wasn't coming on and so by having some really cheap and inexpensive troubleshooting tools i was able to figure it out myself instead of having to pay someone else now the first thing that is always a good thing to have is just a cheap voltage meter and that's exactly what this is. Um, Harbor Freight regularly just gives these things away because they're normally, uh, they only charge like six bucks for them. But for just real basic stuff, these work just fine, guys. Um, you know, they're, yes, they're not an electrician's quality tool. No, I'm not saying that. But, you know, for the Weekend Warrior, the troubleshooting hack, you know, <laughs> this will do just fine for you. And this allows you to check for voltage. And you know, it's pretty simple. You know, you got two probes that are on here. The red is almost always positive. Black is almost always negative, especially when you're dealing with automotive world and direct current. See, DCV direct current. And guys, this isn't meant to be a tutorial on how to run a voltage meter. Uh, I'm just telling you that uh, this is a cheap tool that you can use to find out if you got voltage. So at any time, you can walk up to a battery, put these on there, and you know whether or not your battery is properly charged or not. So that's the first one. And so the first thing I did was I came over and I checked to see if I had voltage coming uh, this system line coming in here that powers the the heat sensor down to the bottom of the radiator and I did have you know a, a good solid 11 12 volts there so there was no problem there so somehow between here and down on the the sensor on the radiator um, the voltage wasn't getting back up or the fan was bad so what I did uh, to make sure that it wasn't actually the fan was I simply disconnected this right here and I used jumpers. So here's what jumpers look like, right? They're just cords that have alligator clips on the end of them or for roach clips for you 70s druggies. <laughs> 
Just kidding. Hey, guys. All right, so using a tool like this, it's very simple to tell uh, if the fan was good or bad. So uh, all I simply did is, you know, remove the covers off of my uh, positive and my negative here on the solenoid because these are straight shots in from my battery to power the winch. And um, I simply, you know, hooked one in each on the positive and the negative and then put one each on the positive and the negative on the inside of this connection and the fan kicked on. So I knew it wasn't my fan, so I didn't have a problem with the fan. Now the next thing that, that I did in my troubleshooting was just to simply check and see if perhaps I didn't have a problem with a bad connection. Because sometimes these types of connections can get dirt and film and, and things in there and they won't make a good electrical connection. It will look like it's properly physically connected, but that doesn't mean that it has a good electrical connection. So uh, one thing I always keep around the shop that is another good tool to have is uh, electrical parts cleaner. And you can spray this down into your connections and uh, it does a good job of cleaning out the goobers and you know, grass, mud, things that may have built up in there over time as you're riding, especially into, you know, a connection like that down there to clean those out. Once I did that and just connected it all, sure enough, that was my problem. And, you know, I, I uh, left it on and let it run, you know, jiggled the wire to make sure there was no short in it, you know, while it was running to make sure um, that it wasn't just, you know, a loose connection and it was shorting out. It was actually something that was inside of one of these that wasn't allowing um, the electrical uh, circuit to make and uh, fixed my problem. So I just want to share that with you guys that, you know, there, there are cheap, inexpensive tools that are out there that you can use to save you a lot of money and uh, also, you know, you're not dependent on someone else. Another really inexpensive tool that you guys can use is just a cheap circuit tester like this. So there's a light bulb in there. And the end of that is basically your positive. And the end of this is your negative. And so if you, if you connect this to the negative on your battery and you touch that to the positive, it'll light up. And so you'll know whether or not you've got current anywhere. So just like before, when I was checking to see on this wire here, if I had voltage, I could have used this as well. I could have just connected that to the negative and touched this to the positive. And if it lit up, I would know that I had voltage going down there. Now, it may not have been enough voltage, but I would still have voltage. And so this is a really good cheap tool just to have around to help you find, you know, where you do and you don't have voltage. I used this uh, earlier. Uh, this is a control wire right here for my winch. And I needed to find a live because I got one here and then I got this one here. A live wire because this extra control wire has to be wired in for the winch or else it won't work. And that, that way is so your winch only works when the key is on. I use this, all right? I just connected that to the negative and stuck this inside, you know, so, sorry. Stuck this inside there, uh, or excuse me, I started on this one. I stuck it in there, no voltage, stuck it in there and I had voltage. So then I knew that uh, that was the live one when the key is on. And so, there you go. You know, just another real cheap, inexpensive tool. This is probably five or six dollars. Uh, these alligator clips, you know, you can buy anywhere from, uh, depending on where you buy them, you know, uh, a couple of bucks to, you know, maybe 10 bucks for 10 or 15 of them, something like that. And, you know, like five or six bucks for a Harbor Freight voltage meter. And uh, you can save yourself a lot of money and teach yourself some basic skills. Well, hopefully you guys learned something today, and thanks for joining me. I hope you're having a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon. Shalom.